This is a fan-generated show. If you would like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Good evening. Welcome to the Glazov Gang. Tonight, quote-unquote, but ISIS kills Muslims too. Our guest to discuss this issue with us this evening, Daniel Greenfield, back by popular demand, the editor and writer of the blog, The Point, at frontpagemag.com. He is a Shillman Fellow at the David Horowitz Freedom Center. Daniel, what an honor and a pleasure to have you back on the Glazov Gang. It's an even bigger honor to be back here. Thank you, Daniel, and thank you for all the superb Daniel Greenfield moments that you're doing on the Glazov Gang. Daniel Raymond Ibrahim, who is a Shillman Fellow at the Freedom Center as well, wrote a very profound uh, and very important article the other day called, But ISIS Kills More Muslims Than Non-Muslims! Exclamation mark. He wrote it for Front Page Magazine. Daniel, we hear this all the time. You know, Obama brings it up, the media brings it up. You know, that ISIS kills Muslims, so somehow ISIS is disconnected from Islam. Um, I mean, let's just begin with the mind-boggling stupidity of this because it implies that totalitarian ideologies do not eat their own, which is a complete ignorance of, uh, of history. Go ahead, Daniel. Certainly the Soviet Union, the Soviet Union, the Soviet Union killed far more communists than anybody else did. Gangs and drug dealers kill each other far more than they do anyone else. When you have a movement that's violent, that's totalitarian, when you have a group that routinely uses violence to solve differences, they're going to end up killing a lot of their own. And with Islam, there's, a ideolog there's the idea of ideological supremacy. ISIS claims to have supreme power over all other Muslims. There are the Muslim groups that rival that, that insist that they should have power, or that they're, it should be more of a longer evolutionary process. And so they're really fighting over who's going to run things ultimately, which is, again, what the communists were doing. For example, it's what the Nazis were doing to some degree. And uh, these movements are killing each other more often than they kill anybody else, mainly because they're all scrambling to be the top dog. And it is precisely because of Islam and its teachings and its theology, um, its teachings about the Kufr and apostates, uh, this is all interlinked because if you listen to ISIS, if you listen to Islamic extremists and how they hate each other, let's say in terms of the Sunnis and the Shia. For instance, the Sunni you know, will refer to the Shia that they're worse than the Kufr, etc., etc. That this whole idea of being not a pure Muslim is what leads to Muslims getting killed, but it's the Islamic nature of this hatred of the non-Muslim. The interesting thing here is that what supposedly makes ISIS so extreme Bottom line, from the Muslim perspective, is that it treats Muslims the way Muslims treat non-Muslims. That's really what makes it so horribly scary because of the whole idea that it can declare Muslims to effectively be non-Muslims, which means that ISIS, again, is basically treating Muslims like non-Muslims. And the underlying problem here is the treatment of non-Muslims. Right. So Islam's teaching on the importance of hating and subjugating and killing the kufr, the infidel, the non-Muslim, if he doesn't pay taxes, if he doesn't feel himself subdued uh, and pay, you know, pay the jizya or convert, etc., that this is precisely how the Islamic extremist sees the other mute Muslim that he doesn't see as a pure Muslim. It's all about Islam. It's all about Islam, and as I wrote a few days ago, once you start dehumanizing people, once you start deciding which people you can kill, it ultimately rebounds on you. It's violence, to give me the violence that's inherent in your ideology, it's inherent in your society, and this is just spilling over. Once you say that I can kill Bob because he's a Christian, or I can kill Shmuel because he's a Jew, uh, at some point you're going to say, well, I can kill... Ahmed over there because he's a Shiite, then you're going to say, I can kill Muhammad over there, because even though he's a Sunni, he's not the right kind. Uh, he doesn't keep the same things that I do. He's not as religious as I am. And this goes on ever, 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 until you have just two Muslims, each fighting to the death over, which is the absolutely purest and religious, most religious form of Islam. You know, and Daniel, I'm not, you know, trying to pat us on the back here, trying to boast that we're discussing this, but Daniel... This is not discussed anywhere. I have not seen this discussion 
anywhere, CNN, MSNBC, even on Fox News, like when they discuss this, that ISIS kills Muslims, I am yet to see a serious discussion bringing on Islamic scholars, discussing the texts and the theology of Islam and why ISIS is killing Muslims. Why? I mean, it's just incredible. This is an issue that is not discussed. The media has its narrative. Its narrative is that Islam is the religion of peace. Therefore, if ISIS is violent, it's non-Muslim. And the idea that ISIS kills Muslims just proves that it's non-Islamic. This is obviously nonsense because uh, interreligious civil wars have historically been common. Uh, Inter-ideological wars have been common. Again, as we just discussed, communists certainly killed plenty of communists. It didn't mean the Soviet Union was not communist. Well, this is exactly it. I mean, when I hear these stupid statements, I mean, when Obama says this, uh, when, when the media keeps regurgitating this, and I mean, it's like saying that Stalin killed a lot of Bolsheviks and so, therefore, what Stalin is doing has nothing to do with Marxism or communism. A communist actually did make that argument or variations of that argument. It's obviously ridiculous nonsense because, again, this is the essential thing of the ideology. Once you build an ideology on force and revolution, on violence, on dehumanizing people, on killing them, that's just going to be inherent in the system. It's going to be how you settle disputes within the ideology. If you don't have a way to discuss things, and to talk and to settle things around ideas, around debate, if you don't have an open society, you can end up killing each other. Daniel, just let's crystallize uh, just some of these themes with the time we have left. Before we discuss specifically Islam, how totalitarian ideologies eat their own, and we've seen this over and over again, the Soviet Union devouring its own, Maoist China, the Cultural Revolution, devouring the people that first built uh, you know, the communist uh, system. We saw Castro's Cuba devouring its own, the Sandinistas devouring its own. Tell us a little bit about this, how these utopian totalitarian ideologies ultimately eat their own children. Uh, you have two basic ingredients here. The first ingredient is utopia. You mentioned that it's also an impossible utopia a utopia that can't be achieved, and two, it has to be achieved by any means necessary within the ideology with an emphasis on violence. So once you combine the two elements together, you basically have this cult, this cult that says we have to make utopia happen, and we have to do it through violence, and we have to get every, rid of every obstacle in our path, and it begins eating its own, because first of all, the, the setup becomes unmanageable. You can't have these kinds of people actually running a system, so to make the system work, you have to purge the true believers, and you, so you have this kind of cycle of violence, and every argument within the ideology is essentially going to be settled by killing the people who disagree with you. So you have this endless cycle of bloodshed until either the whole thing just collapses or somebody else steps in and gets rid of it. And Daniel, there's something about these utopian revolutions, the, these communist revolutions, and, and Sharia and Jihad uh, has a lot of mutated similarities. Um, this, this unquenchable rage, this hatred, and they're, you know, they write about Stalinism, for instance, how the killing machine took on a life of its own. And when the kulaks are all killed, then you have to create more kulaks. And ultimately, you're killing, 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 and then a self-devouring begins. There's some kind of a death wish here, but there has to be the killing, and then ultimately it begins to devour itself. Tell us a little bit about this, this rage and, and hate and self-hate, this suicidal impulse in this utopian uh, dream. This really dates back to the French Revolution, which uh, went through the same cycle you mentioned. Um, uh, you, you can really find a good description of this in Orwell's 1984, where uh, he says that the purpose of power is power. Uh, if you set up a killing machine and the purpose of the machine is killing and you're going to have to find more people to kill and communism or the ideology, Nazism, uh, the idea has just become this kind of uh, paper-thin wrap over the real purpose of the, the machine, which is just murder. And that really happened to Islam a while back. It just became uh, dressing over the need to kill, the need to conquer, the need to perpetuate the cycle of violence. Thank you, Daniel. And now, before we end, let's just look at this Shia-Sunni hatred. You know, it's interesting. Um, the contributing editor of Front Page Magazine, Stephen Brown, has uh, 
noted to me several times. He says, you know, I'll speak to certain Muslims and they'll say, Islam is a religion of peace. And then Stephen says, and then I ask them, but the Sunnis and the Shias have been massacring each other, uh, you know, forever, you know, since time, uh, since Muhammad. And they say, oh, yeah, yeah, the Shia and the Sunnis, yeah, always massacring each other. And then Steve will say, but I thought you just said that Islam was a religion of peace. And, you know, he says that they become very confused when he confronts them with this because it's almost that these two parallel ideas and universes, they don't, they can't reconcile them, but they somehow exist on their own. Tell us about this. Tell us about the Sunni Shia and how they hate and kill each other, and yet they believe their religion is a religion of peace. Uh, first of all, Islam is not a rational culture. Islam a culture is not rational. So confronting them with that argument is like trying to make a dog look into a mirror. It just confuses the dog. Uh, you don't, you can, uh, within Islam, you can have two contradictory ideas existing at the same time, and there's no logical test to say that one thing contradicts the other, therefore they can't both be true. So this is the kind of amusing situation that happens a lot uh, in uh, debates within Islam. But on the practical Sunni-Shiite side, uh, the idea is that Islam creates peace, it creates truth, which means you need the absolute victory of Islam to do this. Peace is defined not as nonviolence, it's defined as supremacy. It's defined as the end of fitna and total religious supremacy of the true one true Islam, whatever that may end up being. So uh, Sunni Shiites fighting each other just part of the process of arriving at the true Islamic peace. Uh, much like communism, all the gulags and the mass murders were part of the process of arriving under the true communism, where one day or everybody will live under communism. It's the murder and the fighting is part of the process of producing the sort of utopian peace. Thank you, Daniel. And so before we conclude, uh, let's summarize the main theme. Uh, so when Obama and uh, his groupies and all the people, and uh, especially on the left that think like this, when they say, oh, but, you know, ISIS kills Muslims too, therefore ISIS has nothing to do with Islam. No. The person that knows about this issue and has the courage to look at this issue says, ISIS kills Muslims, and it is precisely because of Islam. Summarize for us quickly why, Daniel. I said, when you settle differences within a religion, within an ideology, by killing people, then that's fundamentally what it does. Islam is built on violence. It's built on settling differences uh, by suppressing people who disagree with you. When ISIS kills Muslims, it's doing so for the same reason as the original Sunni-Shiite conflict. That's the way that Islam settles all theological differences, ultimately has to do so through violence. That is what Islam does. Daniel Greenfield, an honor to have you on the Glasoff Gang. Thank you very much for having me on, Jamie. Thank you. All of our viewers, go to Daniel's blog, The Point, at frontpagemag.com. Everybody I know, including myself, goes there every day. Just the best blog on the Internet. No exaggeration there. Just brilliant. Uh, always gets to the heart of the matter. We'll see you next week on the Glasoff Gang. Good night.